All right, where were we going with the uh, the the program? Yes, the NXT Takeover. There were three matches that I wanted to see. We just saw Walter and Elia. That was one. Obviously, there's two left, and the next one was Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. And let me, it's it's been 30 years to the year since the Cactus Jack, Eddie Gilbert, two out of three matches stipulation deal that was basically the inspiration for this that they did in Philadelphia for Joel Goodhart. What month was that? Is this an anniversary? It would be somewhere in the summertime, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would have been around this period of time, yeah. Well, that was the inspiration for this, obviously. Cause what what did they do? You were were you there for that Joel Goodhart event? What were the stipulations? Unfortunately, I was not there. One of them was a barbed wire match. I was there. I, re- I remember. Yeah, one was barbed wire, one was Falls Count Anywhere, and one was something else. And they sprinkled it out. They didn't call it two out of three falls. They called it two out of three matches, matches, and they sprinkled it throughout the show. So they had a match, then a couple more matches, and then had their second one, a couple more, and then their third one. That was the one where Cactus tried and failed, uh, finally succeeded, but he had to try real hard to get Eddie Gilbert to try to break a bottle over his head for real that they hadn't baked. He was sure he could, and then Eddie was hitting him, boom. Boom. And I think it took a few times to break the thing. If they did, I can't remember, but they did. They finally did. They finally did. But anyway, now I see the reason why they spaced it out. And again, I will start with the kudos. I love Adam Cole and I love Kyle O'Reilly, and that's not a secret. And we've raved about both of them. Uh, Kudos to Adam Cole for signing signing an extension to finish this program and put Kyle O'Reilly over no matter what Cole ends up doing, staying, going, whatever. But this was so over gimmicked, especially after what we just saw. We just saw two guys have a fucking match and get the people going crazy with not one single foreign object or gimmick or whatever. And now we've taken two guys that under normal circumstances athletically can tear the house down, but we have gimmicked them so much and it looks so silly coming after what we just saw, Walter and Elia, that the first, the first fall of the match was regular rules because I believe, uh, didn't, who picked that? Wasn't it, uh, O'Reilly saying he just wanted to beat Cole, or was it Cole said he wanted to beat O'Reilly with regular rules? Whatever the fuck. The point is, they started hot and fast, which I wrote as soon as they did it, may be a mistake after previous match. But with regular rules, and and then I wrote, I think they're going to run off and leave the people. And they did. They work especially well together. Their shit's always great. Their timing and their selling and their shit looks good. But they rushed through this because they had so much more to do in the interesting stipulations that they just, they just got this out of the way, it seemed like. And Kyle blocked the Panama sunrise and got a quick one, two, three. It was rushed. And they've got another female referee, which... uh, if even if you're going to do it, it needs to be a gimmick, not a habit. Um, but that, what do you think about the first fall? Because it just was what it was. I like both guys, and I have, and I think O'Reilly has a ton of potential. But I couldn't get into this at all, and it's partly because it followed the best match that I've seen in years. So it's hard to watch this after that. And it went a while because of the two out of three falls. And you're right. Goodhart did it better. Space it out over the show. Boy, it? Is that the first time those English words have been uttered in that order? Except when Joel was saying it. Yes. Yes. It just, it, uh, this match didn't connect to me. And the first fall kind of started it. And it, to me, it was all downhill from there. Well, let's make that point. Because as soon as that's over, now the second fall is a street fight. But... <laughs> A street fight, part of the visual and part of the appeal, guys are in street clothes and they use the belts or the boots or whatever the fuck. This is, they're in their tights, but now suddenly street fight rules, so what do they do? 
they both roll to the floor and pick up the fucking apron and start looking under the ring and the crowd starts chanting, we want tables. Because they've educated a lot of these people to go that the match isn't any good until furniture comes out. And so now they've what they do athletically and in the ring hand to hand is the best part of Kyle and, and Cole's Kyle and Cole's games. And they've rushed through that. And now they're trying to bring in furniture and gimmicks and it turns into an indie rific and or every AEW style match from here after these two guys have just, so then I mean, from the point where Kyle sits Cole down in a chair, he sets up a chair at ringside. They're out on the floor. He sets Cole in the chair, goes to get a garbage can. It took eight full seconds while Adam Cole is sitting, minding his own business in a chair he's been placed in by his opponent. Then Kyle puts the garbage can over Cole's head, which Cole lifts his arms up so that he can get his arms in position so this doesn't fucking cave his face in. Then he sits there in a chair in a sitting position with a garbage can over his head for eight more seconds while Kyle jumps up on the apron, runs the other end, and runs off and drop kicks the can. So now you've got two of the best workers in the company doing fucking garbage wrestling stunts. And there's another can, and there's two chairs in the ring, and there's a couple of kendo sticks. And poor Adam Cole has to struggle for 12 full seconds to wedge a chair in the turnbuckle and then gives the, you know, the people are on him. So he gives him a nice curtsy when he does it. And the ring's littered with shit. And at this point I wrote down, I'd love to see Kyle O'Reilly against Valter. Now the kendo Boy, stick Boy, would that be a great match. Yes. I'd love to see that they were doing all of this stuff better than most guys do because they're better talents, Cole and O'Reilly, but I'm zoning out because it's all we ever see. It's so overdone. It's a step down for these guys to be doing a garbage match. Their striking couldn't follow Walter and Elia. The cans and the sticks and the chairs made the visual outlaw. And I felt bad that this for both guys, that this wasn't better. And then <sighs> Cole gets first of all, did you see them wrapping the cha the chains around their fists? Yeah, I saw that. Did you see that Adam Cole wrapped the chain around the wrong part of his fist? <laughs> I did. I, you know, I didn't notice that. No. Unless he had g given a karate back fist to somebody, he wrapped the chain around the back of his fist, not the punching part of his fist. And the chains were too big. Any and O'Reilly got one from the other side at the same time. The chains were too big. To I mean, my God, how long has it been since we've actually seen somebody go to the goddamn pet store and get a dog choker chain about fucking eighteen to twenty four inches long and pull it out of your tights, wrap it around your fist, and knock somebody out? Lawler did it every night for ten fucking years. It, but these guys have never done this finish. They get chains that are way too big and too long for fist wrapping chains, and they wrap them around the wrong part of their fists. And then they met in the middle of the ring and had a hockey fight with fake punches over and over where nobody sold the chains that were wrapped around their fists when they were hitting each other. And then they both dropped the chains. And that Wade Barrett said, we're seeing pure malevolent theater. Pure malevolent theater. He didn't say he, it. He yelled it. He yelled it. He managed to make, to expose the business, tell everybody it's fake and make it sound silly at the same time. And the visual was ridiculous. And here's what I did on Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. When they didn't sell the fucking fist chain punches, I said, fuck this fall. And I fast forwarded to the finish. And Imagine how much it takes me to have to fast forward Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly, but I was offended by this. And the finish of this fall was they had set two chairs up in the ring back to back. So the backs are together and pointing upward. Kyle goes to the top and Adam Cole slams Kyle O'Reilly off the top onto the two chair backs and then knead him in the head. One, two, three. 
that was a stupid, irresponsible bump. Why would you ever take that? Why would anybody think to take that? And and so now we've got Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly doing garbage wrestling. And I guarantee you <clears throat> that they thought, well, we'll separate the two shoot style matches with Walter and Elia and Cross and Joe with this gimmick match, not really thinking that you didn't want two similar matches together, which you don't usually, but not realizing that Walter and Elia was going to be so good and that this was going to be so silly and overdone that people were just going to fucking start zoning out, which is what the crowd there was doing as well. And by the way, I don't like the girl ring announcer. She has an annoying voice. What? She was fine. What's, what's her problem? What's your problem with her, I should say? She was good. Eh, eh. Better than Justin Roberts. Well, goddamn. Who isn't? I want to hear the fink. Anyway. That may be a problem. The third fall was a cage match. Oh, did you have any comments on the second fall? I think it was the third fall where the handcuffs came out. Yes, it was. So that was going to be my next big critique. But no, I stand by what I said the first fall. It didn't really connect with me. It was all downhill for me after the first fall. And I feel bad for those guys. Same thing with Cross and Joe. For me, and going into it, I was somewhat exhausted. <laughs> and I tuned in right before the Ilya Walter match. And that's the one match I got to see live. I couldn't watch anything after that. Nothing could even come close to... to equaling that and this thing just went on forever and well you know I'll, i i go ahead. no go just ahead. i was just gonna say i'll, I'll tell you if, if samoa joe was as cranky as he was in his younger days he would have beat these guys up can you imagine having to go out and follow chairs and chains and kendo sticks and cages and street fights all in the same match and now you guys go out but anyway, the third hey. fall was a cage. Go ahead. What? Can you imagine Samoa Joe versus Walter? I can imagine everybody versus Walter. And that's what's so heartbreaking about it, that they, they're depriving us of Walter at his prime years. Anyway, um, the cage match, the cage is, <laughs> is, just, is coming down from the ceiling and folding into place. They've spent a million dollars on this because it used to take 20 minutes to set the cage up which would have given people a break and time to calm down so they might be ready to see something, but no, we're going to keep going. As the cage is coming down, Cole attacks O'Reilly, and they go out to the floor, and Cole power bombs O'Reilly on the announcer's desk, then drags his dead body back in the ring, and the cage lowers as O'Reilly sells and Cole takes a rest, and then Cole starts bouncing Kyle off the cage, but now think about this. He's just been body slammed off the top rope back first onto chair backs. Then he's been power bombed on an announcer's desk. And as soon and then he's been bounced off the cage several times, and then he just starts fighting back. And I be honest, the cage stuff that they did without weapons was good. I think if they had just made this a cage match, Colin O'Reilly one fall to a finish inside a cage where they can't get out and get chairs and shit to, to bring in. It would have been different ad enough and, and also not so long as this and also not multiple finishes that took the steam off everything. The cage match would have been better than all of this. And it would have followed Walter and Elia better because it would have been different. And then when Joe and Cross got in, they wouldn't be following a goddamn chaos match where they had all this equipment and did everything in the world, and they but they still wouldn't have a cage so they could go back to wrestling. It might have flowed better. It sir this was to honestly, Colin O'Reilly was overdone mark booking. Like, let's drop the cow. Let's do everything we can do. Uh, Kyle kicked out of a Panama sunrise off the top rope, so Cole pulled out the handcuffs. Jesus Christ. And handcuffed Kyle to the top rope and super kicked him. And then went for another one. 
and Kyle catches the heel hook and Adam Cole taps out while Kyle is handcuffed to the ropes of the ring. Fucking hell. <sighs> they made me not like Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly in this particular setting here. That's a, that's certainly an accomplishment. That's like making you not like jacking off. I'm going to say one more thing and it won't be about that. It hit me too watching this. You brought up before with the Walter match. Not really a muscular guy, but he's a big guy. He looks like a football player before steroids. He's a big guy. Yeah. Adam Cole's not muscular, but it's like he doesn't work out at all. Like there's no definition or muscle tone. And that's a different thing than being a smaller guy. You know, like Christopher Daniels wasn't a big guy, but he was tone. Yeah. Adam Cole, I, I don't know what it is. It's just. It, I, I'm, I'm assuming he has to be working out, but it looks like you look at his legs, you look at his arms. It looks like he doesn't even go to the gym. I mean, I, you know, some guys are genetically not predisposed. I don't know what his routine is, positive, negative, or indifferent. Some guys are not predisposed to being – he's obviously in great cardio shape. Yeah. But he does need – some size to have some gravitas, especially in the upper body. Or some definition, just what you have, make it solid. That's kind of maybe the issue. What he has doesn't look solid. It just looks well, like... Well, now, we'll ask Britt Baker about that. Thank you very much. Well, all right, you go talk to her. I'll hang out with Reba over here in the corner. All right, well, there you go. Hey, Reba, Reba! <laughs> no, that's our Reba, but... uh, uh Well, no, that's the Reba. Well, let's... Uh, Ariba he, he, to the next he, match, on delay. Uh, on delay. Um, and without further delay, <laughs> let's on delay over to the other match that I was looking forward to. 